the first 10 minutes of this movie, I was just thinking, this is pretty much just Aladdin and the stars. Solo, scum rat, I can fly that. Wait, what the heck? Why is it just static? Where the hell's my title? What the f What? Oh. Solo, a Star Wars story directed by Ron Howard, starring Alden Emmerich, Donald Glover, Woody Harrelson, Amelia Clark, and Paul Bettany. When this movie was first announced, I gotta be honest, like I wasn't too excited for it because it just felt like it was something that we didn't need. It was something that they were just kind of reaching out for, for a money grab. No, no fans really wanted it because we had our definitive Han Solo and Harrison Ford. And even when the movie was coming up for release, and like... I just really don't care that much. Now that it's made, we have to ask ourselves, is this worth existing? So let's get on to the review. First, let, we'll just discuss the huge elephant in the room. There are some people who think that Han Solo is just an untouchable character that can't be replaced. You just can't recast Han Solo. But I'll give you this, Alden Ehrenreich did a very good job as Han Solo. He wasn't trying to do a Harrison Ford impersonation. I felt like he did the character justice. He made it his own, he made it fun, he made him cool. He made him like, at some points, like he's a ditz. Like this isn't, this is an origin story for the most part. So the fact that he isn't like the cool Han Solo that we know in episode four, and then over time, of the course of the movie, you're able to see a, a little bit of development in his character. And then finally, towards kind of more the end of the movie, we kind of get the Han Solo that we do know. Then you have Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian, and you couldn't get better casting for this. Lando is such a cool character, and Donald Glover is such a cool person. He does more of the typical Billy D. Williams impression of Lando Calrissian. He is more kind of on point of who Lando is, but that's okay with him. So the fact that you can do kind of more of an impersonation and have it work, that's awesome. Then you have the supporting cast with Amelia Clark, Woody Harrelson, Paul Bettany, and I will say, you know, Woody Harrelson shows up to play. He's a really cool character. Then you have Paul Bettany, who is pretty much the big bad of the movie, but you don't really see him a whole lot. So there is that lack of an antagonist to everybody else in the film. What I will say is, Amelia Clark hasn't really had the greatest success outside of Game of Thrones, like when it's come to being in a major motion picture. I will say this is probably her best performance and her best work. So it's kind of refreshing to see her in something else that's not Game of Thrones where she does a really good job, you know, being Daenerys Targaryen, but now being into something else. That's really great to see that she's able to finally transition into something that's not Game of Thrones. What I like with these big giant franchises now that they're able to make a subgenre film inside of their franchise, as in Rogue One was kind of more of a war story. This is very much like a gangster heist movie. And I think it's really cool that they're able to do that and able to pull that off and not necessarily make it feel like a Star Wars movie, but make it just feel like a dark and gritty gangster film. Now when I say dark, I don't mean like it's very sinister. It's more so just the lighting and stuff is just really dark. And sometimes it was kind of hard to see. I'm not sure if there's a projector that was at the theater, but it was always just a little blurry and a little bit too dark where you just kind of had to squint your eyes a little bit to kind of see what was going on. And kind of same thing with the action, which was a little weird because I feel like they use a lot of shaky cam and a lot of close-up stuff. So when you have a cam going up like this, like in a very kind of confined space, you're not 100% sure what's going on. It might make you a little bit of a motion sickness, but that's just a little thing. You know, it's not too big of a gripe with the film. Now I'll go a little bit more back onto the positives that there is a lot of cool and just fun moments in the film like there's questions and stuff that you kind of want answered and there's stuff that you want to see that you that was referred to in the other Star Wars films mostly episode 4 you know stuff like the Kessel Run and how Han got the Millennium Falcon from Lando how him and Chewie met up and when those moments come like it's not like a yay like a cheer moment it's just more like you just get a little smile on your face like when something happens you're like hmm I like that but you know, and just to wrap things up, is this a great movie? I think not. Is it a good movie? Yes. Did it need to exist? No. Is it fine that we have it? Yes. So I'm not going to tell people to stay away from this movie. I just want to put like at the upper echelon of Star Wars film. Like I'll put it around the middle. Like it's fine. Like it's in between, you know, might just be like a step below Rogue One, but this one, it was still a really fun movie, and I still think people should go out and see it, even though if they have a little bit 
to stand for it to feel like it's not necessary that we have it but we do now and i think that people should just enjoy it not you know have a stick up their butt because it's like it's han solo you can't do a han solo origin movie without harrison ford just, just be quiet like it's fine just go see it so like always with my videos like share subscribe hit that subscribe thing hit that bell on the video hit that like button and like always i will catch you at the cinema